Welcome to 252 Theater's online service, a ministry of New Spring Church and Wichita, Kansas. Fun lives here, so get ready to have a great time and learn about a great big idea. That's right. A big idea is something God wants to do inside you to change the world around you. The biggest ideas are the big three. We hope after joining us online, you'll know that you can treat others the way you want to be treated, make the wise choice, and trust God no matter what. You'll get to experience fun games, skits, worship, and of course, a powerful story straight out of God's Word. More than a video, this is your chance to be a part of something amazing. So get your popcorn, crank up the volume, and get ready for incredible fun. It all starts in three, two, one. I think that one of the most amazing movie scenes that I've ever seen is from a movie called Inside Out. You guys ever heard of it? Yeah. It's really fun. Now, uh, the part that I'm talking about is when everybody's favorite dolphin-shaped cotton candy made out of creature, Bing Bong, loses his rocket wagon, gets pushed off into the memory dump, and he gets really sad, and he starts, does anybody know what he cries? He cries candy. And he comes up and he sits on the the edge of the the memory dump. And Joy comes over and Joy just tries to cheer him up because she's trying to to get back there. Hey, come on, it's okay, let's go, let's do our thing. But sadness comes over and sadness sits next to him. And she says, wow, that must be really hard. And he says, yeah, yeah. And you know what it does? It actually cheers him up that she was sad with him. You know what? You you didn't come here today to learn from Disney. You didn't even come here today to learn from Mr. Cody. You guys came here today to learn from God's Word. And so I want to share with you a Bible verse. Uh, Instead of a story today, we've got one verse. That's it. Just one verse. And we're going to look at what this verse means for your life and how God can use this big idea of joy to change the world around you. Now, our, our verse that we're going to be talking about today is from the book of Romans. Uh, so Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, Acts, and then Romans in your New Testament. And this is what it says. I'd love for you guys to, to you can look it up on the screen as I read it. It says this, be joyful with those who are joyful. Be sad with those who are sad. Let me read that again. And I want you to pay attention to a couple words here, okay? Be joyful with those who are joyful, and be sad with those who are sad. Does it say be joyful for those who are joyful, or be sad for those who are sad? No, it says to be joyful with them, to be sad with them. Here's the thing, there is a a, a word that you may have heard before and wondered what it means, and that word is empathy. Say it, it's pretty fun. Everybody say empathy. Empathy Empathy is when you have the ability to feel what somebody else might be feeling. You, You maybe have heard this phrase before, that you should put yourself in somebody else's shoes. That doesn't actually mean take your shoe off and put it on them and you try their shoes on. It just means imagine what it would be like if you were in their situation. Imagine what it would be like if your friend got their leg broken and wasn't able to be on the soccer team. Imagine how you would feel if your leg was broken and you weren't able to be on the soccer team. So what Paul tells us in the book of Romans, he was inspired by God to write, be joyful with those who are joyful and be sad with those who are sad. And so uh, we're going to look today at how you can put this verse to work in your life. Hey, boys, pay attention uh, of how God can change the world around you with this verse, okay? Now, I'm going to need some help to help me out and uh, act out some scenarios, uh, okay? So let's see, uh, Abigail, if you want to come up, and Kaylee, would you mind coming up today? Would you help me out? And then Bailey and Andrea, if you can come up too, that would be amazing. All right, if you can stand right here for me, Kaylee. Yep, right here, right in front of the amazing balloons. And then Abigail, if you'll go stand over there for me. Now, uh, for this scenario today, uh, if you guys just want to stand behind each, each kid, I'll tell you what to do. Don't worry. It'll be nice and easy. Now, uh, for this scenario today, you guys are best friends. Go ahead. Give a best friend high five. ka Did you see that? I felt it. That was like a, a high five quake. That was awesome. Now, 
uh, as you guys are best friends, the time has come, and it's back to school. I know. Aww. Although, uh, last night when I said that, everybody went, yay! So, you know, you never know. Now, here's the thing, is that your friend over here, and you, you're in the same class, and it's the second day of school, and you already have a spelling test, all right? So you take your time, you spell out all your words, and guess what? Your friend gets their test back, and what did she get? An A+. Plus. Round of applause! Now, see, look, you don't even need the emoji, but you'd be feeling, if you got an A+, plus, would you be feeling joyful or would you be feeling sad? You'd be feeling really joyful. So let's go ahead and uh, let's just uh, make her look joyful. Yep, just hold it up right in front of her, right in front of her face there. There you go. Yeah, don't, don't smash it against it. That's for, there we go. Look how joyful she is. That is awesome. Now you see that your friend over there is pretty joyful. And what does the verse say? Be joyful with those who are joyful. So you see what happened to your friend and you're joyful too. Uh, oh yeah, look at that. Well done. But. The time comes for your test to do that. Now, Abigail, you, I know that you're so smart. So this is obviously just a scenario, okay? This is just a made-up thing. But your test comes back, and it's not an A+. Plus, it's a C-. minus. Oh, man, we missed four of them out of, out of the ten there. Now, if you're like me, I would be... Go ahead and hold it up for everybody. There, You're looking to see if the words were actually spelled right, weren't you? Cat is spelled with a K. It gets me every time. Now, at this point, I don't know about you, but I'd be feeling pretty... Sad. I mean, you stayed up, you worked hard studying. So go ahead and let's do the sad emoji there. Now, at this point, what does our verse say? To be joyful with those who are joyful, but be with those who are sad. So now Kaylee over here says, you know what? I'm really sad with my friend that she didn't get a good grade on her test. Look at how, look at how sad. Isn't that so emotional? And so what she does, she comes over, come together. Yep, go ahead. Scoot. Yep, there you go. Don't lose your heads. Okay, there you go. All right. And she, her friend just gives her a pat on the back and says, it's okay. You'll get it next time. And you know what that does? That simple gesture of encouragement can cheer somebody up. Look at that. And now everybody is joyful again. Give it up for our amazing actors. You guys did a great job. You can grab a seat. Thank you so much. I'll take those tests from you. That was awesome. That was pretty fun. You're thinking, Mr. Cody, of course that's what would happen at school, but what about, you know, somewhere else? Well, I've got another situation, and for this one, I'm going to have Mr. Owen and Mr. Hudson come up, okay? Come on down. Give them a round of applause as they make their way up. Perfect. And uh, let's see, if I can have Mr. Jerry and Mr. Matt help me out to do the same thing. If you guys could each stand behind, uh, uh, yep, right, right here for me, Owen. Turn around. Wave hi to the audience out there. All right, and Mr. Hudson rocking the Kansas City Chiefs shirt. There's a couple Chiefs fans out there. All right. Now, uh, for this scenario, do you guys like to baseball? Yes. Are you, is that a baseball jersey or is that soccer? It's just soccer. That's what? Who is, who is that? Is Bobby Witt Jr.? He's a Royal. Okay, so that's a baseball player. Okay, good. <laughs> this is perfect. Uh, you, are, you guys are playing baseball, okay? So here's a bat for you. You're up to bat. It's the bottom of the ninth inning, and your team is down by one point, okay? Your bases are loaded. There's a person on each base, and you don't actually swing. I don't want you to hit anybody here. You hit a line drive right to the outfielder, and guess what? He fumbles it, and all three people that were on bases go in, and you get a home run and win the game. Now, how do you think he would be feeling right now? Yeah, yeah, let's get the joy there. Don't swing the bat. Yeah, there you go. Well done. I'd be feeling joyful too. And you look at your friend, and you're like, he just got the game-winning home run. How would you be feeling? Joyful. Yeah, look at that. Looking good. Now, here is the plot twist. Remember, I said that the ball went to an outfielder that didn't catch it. And Hudson, you're actually on the other team, and you were the outfielder that dropped the ball which meant that you actually cost your team the game, not just your friend getting the win. So how do you think he'd be feeling now? He'd be feeling pretty sad, right? Maybe feeling disappointed, maybe feeling like he let his team down. 
Now, you know what? Owen over here, he could be super excited for his win, but you know what? He could remember that Hudson, they are buddies. And so he would be sad with them. That's what Paul tells us to do, to be sad with those who are sad. So now the time has come here. I'll take your bat for you. The time has come where, you know what teams do at the end of the game? They line up and they high five all the other players from the team. So they line up and they get closer and they start to high five each other. Go ahead. Yep. Go ahead and make your way over. This part's the most fun. And uh, not only does he give him a high five, (laughs) okay, maybe a little bit further away. There we go. Too close. Not only does there a high five, but he tells his friend, hey, you'll get it next time. You did a great game out there. And you know what that one simple act of encouragement does, of being sad with somebody when they're sad, is it can make him feel joyful. And you know what? When you have a part in helping somebody else feel joyful, that will make you feel joyful too. Show me your joyful moves. Let's see what you got. Oh yeah. Oh, nice. Well done. Hey, give it up for our guys up here. They did amazing. That was so fun. All right. Everybody say this with me. Be joyful with those who are joyful. Be sad with those who are sad. Sometimes the best thing that you can do for somebody isn't to just try to be the happiest person in the world around them and, hey, it's okay, and, you know, pretend like nothing is wrong. Sometimes the most powerful thing that you can do is just to be there with them. All of us are going to go through something hard at some point. But here's what empathy does, what being joyful when somebody is joyful and being sad when somebody is sad. What it does is it tells them they are not alone. So many times when we feel sad, we feel really alone. Now, obviously, these things were just made-up scenarios that could or couldn't happen. But I want to show you something from a real Little League baseball game. There was a pitcher that had thrown a ball, and when he did, it missed, and it hit the other kid, the batter, right in the head with the helmet. Now, he... uh, he was down. You could imagine how hard that would hurt. Baseballs are not soft. Even softballs, it's, it's a lie. They should call it hardball because it is a hard ball. And he took it right on his helmet so hard that it knocked his helmet off. But you know who the person who was the most stressed out and the, the most sad? It was, it was the pitcher, the one who threw the ball. He was just thinking, I, I just hurt somebody. I did, I did something terrible. It was an accident, but I shouldn't have done that. And so thankfully, the the kid who was hit by the ball, he stands up with the help of those who are around him. And obviously, he gets to walk to his base. Thank goodness he was okay. He gets to walk to his base. But when he gets to his base, he sees that the pitcher was really, really sad. You can actually see his body language. He leaves the base, pauses the game, and watch over, and look what he does. Think about that. Be joyful with those who are joyful. Be sad with those who are sad. In the video, if you were to, if you were to watch the recording, you could actually hear the microphone tell him, it's o- I'm okay, I'm okay. That's what empathy does. Even though he was the one that got hit in the head with the, with the baseball, empathy says, man, I, I'm worried about the one who did that because I bet he's probably pretty worried right now. You know what? That is a great example of sportsmanship. But can I tell you, the ultimate example of this principle isn't a baseball player. It was Jesus. Jesus felt what the people around him felt. I can show you story after story where Jesus did a miracle because somebody came up and they were feeling sad and Jesus had compassion for them. Jesus did a miracle for them. The shortest verse in the Bible, uh, Jesus wept. Jesus wept. Why did Jesus weep? Because his friend died. His friend died. And, and the, his other friends that, that were family with that friend, they were really sad. And Jesus was weeping with them. So here's the thing. Here's what I hope that you know. We always say that a big idea is what God does inside you to change the world around you. And I want you to know that when you have joy, joy from the Lord that we've been talking about, that doesn't just go away. But it lasts forever because that's what Jesus does. When you have that, you can help others find joy too. 
That is the bottom line. So whether you're here right now or whether you're watching online, say this with me. You can help others find joy. And the way that you can help them find joy is being present with them and reminding them of who Jesus is, telling them how good God is. Let me pray for you. Heavenly Father, thank you for each of these boys and girls and all the small group leaders and the tech volunteers. I just pray that you will help us to live this out, every one of us, that we would be close enough to people to know what they're going through, that we would share in their joy and that we would share in their sadness. And we know that because of how you created community to work, that people around us will do the same for us too. Lord, help us to be leaders. Help us to show others how they can have joy, to have joy in Jesus. And we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen.